Her boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. On one pitch black street, in a pitch black alleyway, there's a pitch black garage. It knows everything about you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Tiny Bunny. You might remember if you've been around for a little bit that we initially played chapter 1 and chapter 2 of this game in May 2021. So we've been waiting for chapter 3 for a while now. And it's finally here, it's finally here, it came out yesterday. But the only thing is, because of the update, I can't go back to a previous save. I need to play the game again, which will be fine. It should be quick. And I'm going to go with the ending to chapter two that I did in the third video I did with the Forest Master, because I think that one's the most interesting. Episode three. On end, the wolf's grey fur will stand. Woo! I'm excited. He's the one who hated Barbarin. You think he did it? I've heard he's a weirdo. The warm farewells Rumka and Biasha shouted at the back of fleeing Samyon echoed inside my head. I'll cut your throat! You hear? Warm, sweet, nice, nurturing, kind. <laughs> Was Rumka serious about his threats? Would he chase his former friend deep into the forest and... And then what? Kill him? Just like that? No. That can't be right. I hurriedly rubbed my glasses. The glasses? Samyon was clutching them in his fist while trying to escape the barrage of kicks and slaps from his friends. Former friends by now. And in just a couple of hours, this lost item was lying on the ledge of my window. It was hard to imagine that Sioma suddenly got a guilty conscience and returned to my glasses in such a strange way. I was shocked, but kept walking towards the classroom accompanied by nasty whispers all around me. So I guess what would have maybe happened is if we had let Samyon beat us up initially in this hallway, maybe people wouldn't think that we did it? I don't know. That photo still stood before my eyes. Samyon has gone missing. Samyon is gone. His fat fingers will never get to my throat. His signet ring won't smash into my chin. He'll never humiliate me again. Uh-huh. Is that okay, Anton? You seem oddly happy about it. Wasn't that what I wished for? On the other hand, did I really wish Samyon to become a murky stain on the notice board? He was still someone's son, or grandson, and he went through the same struggles as me. Did I really wish for my unseen companion to dispatch him in such a brutal fashion? I didn't know the answer. Oh my god, Anton is such an empath. I entered the classroom and went towards the last row. All of the chatter suddenly died down, so I walked in there in complete silence. I felt like my classmates pushed and poked me with their stares. They carefully observed every move. Uh, you didn't do anything wrong, Anton. I don't know why you're so concerned. <laughs> the chatter resumed, as if someone unpaused a movie. Hi, Katya. Missed you. Babarin's grandma made such a fuss when he didn't return home. First, she ran to the school. Then she called the cops. Da, da, da. I do feel very bad for Samyon's grandmother, even though Anton didn't do anything. Katya snuck a cunning glance at me, and then leaned into her neighbor and whispered something. Girls from the second row also leaned in, and she shared something with them. Whispers and nods. I kept catching her stare on myself. Her neighbors stared too. The whole class was watching me. It was like they felt they need to watch me, because... They were searching for traces of blood on my fingers. I wanted to defend myself and shout, Guys, listen, I'm innocent! Yeah, don't do that! Romka gave me a heavy, worried look. He was probably as stunned by Samian's disappearance as everyone else. I... Mm, <laughs> honestly, I think Romka had something to do with it. If you haven't gone back and watched the first two chapters of this story, my leading theories was that Romka is the wolf. Romka is the wolf guy. The wolf guy that came into my house and spooked me, and I feel like he did something to Samyon, because Samyon failed at some task. I don't know. I may be going mad, but I think Romka knows something. That's what I'm saying! He knows something, but he won't tell me what. 
But it was also possible that he just didn't care at all, like everyone else. Then Romka shifted his eyebrows in suspicion and stared at Katya, as if informing her that he didn't believe a word she said. I wanted to believe that Romka would take my side. And Byasha, who sat sprawled in his chair, with his chin pressed against the table too. But they were silent. A terrifying thought flashed through my mind. These two could easily betray me, push me off the cliff. Just like they did with Semyon. As if looking for protection, I clutched the ruler until my hand hurt. Who held a grudge against Baburin? Me, I did. Who hit him yesterday? Bullied him? And then... The metal ruler fell out of my weak fingers. It hit the floor with a jingle and made the other kids shudder. Katya bit her tongue and squirmed nervously. If you really thought I was responsible for the for this kid going missing, you wouldn't challenge me publicly in a classroom. <laughs> then again, if something happened to Katya, then it would look uber suspicious that I did it, right? Shut it. I bet you Baburin just got a whipping from his old hag and ran off. They'll find him soon. They'll find him, all right. Well, that sounds suspicious. In a ravine, with his stomach cut open. I gulped. I imagined Sioma on a snowy blanket, his face, white like a fish belly, split down the middle by the crevice of his mouth, snowflakes falling on his glassy eyes and filling up his throat. Gross! See? I could almost hear his condescending tone. It's all your fault. Of course, Samyon did me a favor by disappearing. Thanks to him, my classmates now stared at me in awe. But that was only one side of the coin. What if I'll have to repay that favor soon? The door creaked, and Paulina entered the classroom. I straightened up in a hurry so she wouldn't see me looking like a scared critter. Paulina found me with her eyes, gave me a short nod, and went to her seat. Katya rushed to her neighbors again like a lab rat that saw a treat, and started whispering, switching her gaze between me and Polina. Messages on pieces of paper started jumping around the classroom. And the bell scared the shit out of me! <laughs> All right, stop messing around. Class, stand up. Lilia Pavlovna went to her desk, followed by a policeman in a uniform. Oh, goody! <laughs> Quickly, hide, Anton, hide. You can't see me. It was the man that visited us recently. Tall, and his stare so sharp you could get cut on it. <clears throat> Hello there, kids. Hello there, fellow young people. <laughs> this is Senior Lieutenant Konstantin Vladimirovich. Mm -hmm. This is Senior Lieutenant Konstantin Vladimirovich Tikhanov. He's going to ask you a couple of questions and give you a small PSA. The class livened up. Talking to a policeman was way better than studying. I, on the other hand, was ready to sit through hundreds of hours of Russian literature just to escape the lieutenant's oppressive stare. His brown eyes felt around the classroom, looking for me. Hair stood on the back of my neck and an icicle had lodged in my gut. Is it true that Bobirin got killed by a serial killer? Shush, Ekaterina! Let the adults ask the questions here. I've also just remembered that uh, Katya is the teacher's daughter. Mm hmm. We're all scared. Maybe the killer is somewhere close. Maybe they're even sitting among us. Among us. Maybe they vented in admin. <laughs> Maybe they're a sussy baka. I hate this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tikhanov stepped in between the rows of desks and started walking at an excruciatingly slow pace, brushing his fingers against the chairs as he passed by. Some of the students almost broke their necks following his movements. That's how a crowd of commoners would gleefully anticipate a public execution in the Middle Ages. As he just walked, getting closer and closer to me. I gritted my teeth to stop myself from screaming. Calm down. Breathe. Anton, you didn't do anything wrong, buddy. Chill out. You didn't kill or kidnap anyone. Exactly, that's my point. He already knew the answer to this question, but the policeman still asked in a stern voice, Petrov Anton? Aha! Uh -huh. 
Why? What did I do? What? My muscles turned to stone. I got up and glued myself from the chair. I felt like I could hear all my joints creak in the process. I only wish the Polina wouldn't turn around and see the grimace of horror on my face. What did- what- what did I do? I didn't do anything! This is bullshit! I imagined myself getting jailed and put it into a juvenile detention center where tons of Samyons would constantly harass me. I don't know anything. I have nothing to do with this. Nobody is accusing you of anything. For now. Hmm. I don't like how this is how this is a transpiring. There's a lots of conspiring going on here on this day, and I don't appreciate it. Yeah, God. Only then I noticed a file that said case number in his hand. It had a grey cover, made from a rough carton. It flopped onto the desk like a guillotine blade that slid down on someone's neck. With a measured motion, Tikhanov opened the file, still studying me with his gaze. I caught a glimpse of the documents in the photos. They showed prints on snow. Looked like animal prints. Have you talked to Semyon Baburin before? I only knew him for a day. Everyone knows that Petrov hated him. Katya, please! I turned red. You ugly bitch. Ooh, <laughs> spicy. I wanted to sink my teeth into Katya's face and chew out her cheek. Ew. You sure you didn't do it? I'm starting to get a little suspicious. <laughs> Instead, I replied with the calmest voice I could muster. We had a fight yesterday. But he started it. So I hit him. How hard did you hit him? He's literally 13 years old. How hard do you think he hit him? Not that hard. I mean... I waved my hand indecisively. Tikhanov looked at my fist as if he was surprised that I managed to hit a big kid from the photo. Surprisingly, Lilia Pavlovna came to my rescue. Babarin is a troubled teen, a true pain in the rear. Always picking fights with the other kids. Thank you, teach. Big preach. The officer replied with a meaningful nod and fished out a notebook from the file. Algebra? Is this yours? I averted my gaze. Oh yeah, when we fought the second time out in the snowy bit, they flipped my bag upside down and that's where the bunny mask came from, so all my books must have been left there. It was a math notebook with my name on it. My classmates devoured me greedily with their eyes. It felt like even the writers on the portrait squinted at me with suspicion. Y yes. We found it in the forest. In the area where the tractor driver, who was plowing snow, last saw Baburin. I started blinking in bewilderment. Rompka ransacked my school bag. This notebook probably just got lost somewhere in the bushes. The lieutenant knew about the school brawl, but was he aware of the fight in the forest clearing? I had witnesses that could testify to Semyon and I walking in different directions after that. I looked towards the boys, hopeful. Rumka, who sat behind Tikhanov, put a finger to his lips. And when the officer quickly turned around, he pretended to pick his nose. Delightful. Boys like Rumka would probably say something like, snitches get stitches, in a situation like this. I frantically fixed my glasses. Wait. Samyon took them away yesterday, and now they're... So, what were you doing in the forest yesterday, Anton? I go to school through the forest. It could have easily fallen out of my bag. Easily. Just like me producing this half-truth. Be careful out there. Before I could realize whether it was a genuine piece of advice or a veiled threat, the teacher said, The officer will now tell you some rules you should follow. Exactly. Romka swayed in his chair and gave me a thumbs up. Attaboy. Good job keeping your trap shut. I nodded, even though I didn't feel a shred of pride from his praise. After all, he was the one who threw my notebooks and textbooks into the snow. He was the one ordering Semyon, despite changing his allegiance later. True. Whether the criminal really exists or not, you should be mindful for your safety. 
The police, your parents and your teachers are all watching over you. But no one can guard you better than you can guard yourself. Alright? Any questions? A stockade of arms rose from the desks. I have a question. Are you or are you not a sassy baka? Don't lie. You're under oath. The kids shouted over each other, swarming the policemen with questions. In an attempt to calm down the chorus, he moved towards the blackboard. The grey file was left lying in front of me. I looked around the classroom. My classmates were catching officers every word. Only Romka was saying something to Byasha. Lilia Pavlovna was staring into the window, fighting back yawns. I'ma open it! Ah! <laughs> Oops! <laughs> well, come on, you can't be pissed if you leave a notebook, a case file, on a kid's desk after just a cousin of of stuff. A cousin? They're gonna be curious and open it. I know I would in that scenario, fuck yeah. As soon as I touched the folder, Tikhanov lashed at me with his eyes. My hand instinctively moved away, as if that stare actually hurt. The officer just kept staring at me without saying a word, making me squirm under the weight of this uncomfortable silence at the sneering looks of my classmates. And then he suddenly continued his speech, as if nothing happened. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I clanged my teeth from surprise, pushed myself into the back of my chair, blinking in bewilderment. The officer silently gathered the documents and gave me a stern look. Uh, <laughs> don't be mad. It's okay. I'm gonna reach out and stroke your face. He is now calm. <laughs> Thank you for listening, boys and girls. Thank you, Lilia Pavlovna. And uh, <clears throat> we'll find your classmate. Don't make promises you can't keep. Actually, no, he isn't making a promise he can't keep because he, one way or another, they hopefully will find Samyon. Um, one of them is in significantly worse condition. That sucks. Yeah, right. A thought flashed through my mind. Dig through enough ditches and maybe you'll be able to piece him together. Anton, <laughs> maybe shush, uh, stop. My thoughts turned evil for some reason, and I couldn't control them. Hmm, weird, I'm just random like that. I tried to switch to the lieutenant's speech about suspicious individuals. What if I saw the killer before? What if I was a hair's breadth away from them? Suspicious people. Hmm. I don't know, like the big talking fox that's been following you around? Little suspicious. How suspicious was the fox girl that wandered in the darkness? A weirdo that always appears out of nowhere and then dissolves into thin air with her riddles and rhymes. Could she really harm the hulking Samyon? Should I tell the officer about her? No, I'm not going to do that. Wait, what if I get mocked for speaking out? What if they start whispering behind my back? Or even worse, what if they think I'm insane? Romka gave me a stern look over my shoulder. I doubt someone like him would approve of cooperating with the police. What if that guy is his dad? Sorry, I'm just putting that thought out there so that if that turns out to be the case, I can say, fucking told you. Katya's braid dangled nervously behind the delinquent sitting in front of me. My hand was glued to the desk. Tikhanov was saying goodbye to Lilia Pavlovna. He was about to leave. It'll be too late soon. I'm not gonna tell him about a fox lady. He's not gonna believe me. I don't know if this is the wrong choice, but this is the one I'm gonna make for now. No way. I've had enough humiliation. I'll keep my head down like a bunny. Very specific. Ah, the bell is the scariest thing. I squeezed through the barricade made of desks looking for Polina. But instead I stumbled into my new buddies. Romka and Biasha were waiting for me at the notice board. I was right about you, Toshik. Atta boy. You didn't rat us out. You know, us roughing up Porky. This would have given the police a false lead. I think... Are you sure you have nothing to do with Pop Samyan's disappearance? No. But what about you? Remember how you bailed out on us in the darkness? 
Yeah, I was like, this Four Eyes is a beast. We'll catch up with the fatso and end him, eh? But we believe you. Works both ways, right? Rumpka's stern look made me uncomfortable, so I nodded. Yeah, this... I don't appreciate or approve of your new friends, Anton. You're getting into a bad crowd, I feel. Rumpka lowered his voice and looked around the corridor in suspicion. The other kids were stealing glances at us, whispering. So, Shoma is missing. That's a fact. Not just missing, but most likely already dead. You seem really torn up about it. How do you know that? Because. We already talked about this. It's not the first time this has happened. Think Sinechka, Vova, and Sona went to Narnia? And they'll return from the forest after hanging out there, sucking on some candy? It's clear who got them. Can it be the black... The serial killer! Ah! Sure as fuck, guys! It's the local Chikatilo! Hey, ah, Andre Chikatilo, I know who that is. What do we do now? Stay together, that's what. The three of us are like Voltron. What? <laughs> who? Voltron? What? An anime series about five teenagers, the pilot robot lions, that can fuse into a single mega robot to protect the universe from the forces of evil. That's so cool. Whatever. Since Shoma is no longer with us, let's go. We have a job to do. You'll keep watch for us. Everybody seems to be scared shitless of you. True. Scared shitless? Of me? While I still couldn't wrap all that around my head, their attitudes softened me up and I agreed on the spot. I followed Romka and Biasha through the twilight corridors of our school, savoring my newfound brazenness. We walked pompously, like heroes of some criminal drama, as if the three of us had access to some knowledge, hidden from everyone else, and some sick pairs of sunglasses. I'm not sure I would have gone with them if they had told me what the goal of their campaign was. We hid in the darkness near the school gym, and my companions started rubbing their knuckles, watching boys leave the dressing room. Finally, Biasha pointed at someone inside the crowd. What are you doing? Here's that sucker. Romka smiled dangerously and proclaimed in a low voice. Keep watch. If you see a teacher, let us know. I don't want to be part of some bullying thing. I stood at the corner, filled with conflicting feelings and thoughts. In a cul-de-sac behind me, Romka was having a back and forth with some fifth grader. The boy was protesting on the verge of tears, but Romka stood his ground, spewing countless obscenities at him, with Biasha occasionally adding a couple of words of his own. Would Dad praise me for involving myself with this? Alright, now scram! Well, that was actually not as violent as I thought it was going to be. My new friends came out of the cul-de-sac. A light bulb illuminated in Romka's hands. Wow, Polaroid? Is it yours? It is now. There was this guy that owed me a bike for talking shit. Turned out he didn't have one. So he paid with the camera. And I have jack shit use for it. <laughs> I'll have it, I'll take it, looks good. I could clearly imagine how happy Olya would be with this pol Polaroid. I imagined myself taking pictures of my sister, dad and mom. The faces of my family would gradually appear on the hard paper as if emerging from dissolving mist. If you don't need it, can I have it? Romka measured me with a sharp glare turning into the romka I'd met yesterday. The callous leader of a carnivorous pack. Sorry, bro, but I don't throw away things like that. Mm -hmm. I looked at the Polaroid. Well, let's play for it then. Do you have a game in mind? Biasha snickered into his fist. What do you have to bet? Do you even have cash? I slowly turned the pockets of my pants inside out, in wane hopes of salvaging at least some change from my lunch money. Something rustled in my pocket. I fished out the Mercedes-Benz insert I got thanks to Alyssa. Oh yeah, from taking the sweets from her. 
Biasha's eyes almost popped out of their sockets as soon as I brought the car's picture closer. But Romka didn't move a muscle. Yes, that's a poker face. You want me to bet a whole camera for some insert? That's... The gum is worth one ruble, and this Polaroid has a fresh cartridge inside. Look, that's... I have a shit ton of inserts like that. Why would I want... Mercedes-Benz, huh? That's the one we're still missing, Romka. Romka spit on the ground and slapped Biasha over the back of the head. You ruined the ruse! Ah, so this scorched your eye after all. What are we gonna play? Siege Durak? Sure. Mumble Tea Peg? Are these real games? I'm so sorry. I've never heard of them. Let's play Rock, Paper, Scissors. I am indeed. <laughs> I see you're a gambler. Alright. My Polaroid against your Mercedes? Deal. I've saved. Don't worry, I've saved. Uh, people always pick scissors first, isn't that correct? So I'm gonna pick rock. What? Oh, did we both pick rock? Oh, oops. I'm gonna pick rock again! <gasps> yes! I raise my fist towards the ceiling in triumph. Wait, wait, wait. We'll do it best of five here. Okay, changing the rules now. You worried you're gonna lose, Romka? Is that, is that what this is? Okay, I'm gonna go rock again because I'm a fool and a moron. Damn it! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Rock again. Okay, rock again. Is he gonna pick scissors? Damn! <laughs> rock again. Nothing happened. Rock again. Fuck! Let's go with paper. Let's try something different. <laughs> I win. I'm gonna go scissors. <laughs> I won again. Oh. I looked at my opponent with suspicion. So, do I win now, or do I need to beat Biasha too? Oh, wait, that was it, wasn't it? I Sorry, I got distracted. Hey, Romka, he won fair and square. Romka reluctantly gave up. You one lucky bastard. Here. It's been several days since the lieutenant visited our class. At first glance, everything was still the same. The forest still held out its gnarly claws towards the village, and the wind whipped up white flags weaved from powdery snow every night. When my parents argued in the other room, I would turn up the TV's volume to silence their muffled voices and sit close to Olya. Bova and Samian's photos were still two black spots on the notice board. But something did change. I could see how different the looks of my classmates were. They made my pockets bulge with gifted apples. Their animosity was gone. School wasn't scary anymore. But most importantly, a shadow slid across my desk, leaving behind a mysterious note. I glanced into the space between rows, but the messenger was already nowhere to be found. It's a ghost! I took the piece of paper and carefully inhaled the wafting aroma. Blackberry. I'll be waiting at a cul-de-sac near the dressing room. Come alone. Ooh! Someone's got a little crush on Anton. Who's it gonna be? Or is it threat and we're gonna get beat up? Drunk on that sudden call, I immediately started walking, looking over my shoulder from time to time, making sure nobody was following me. I didn't even notice how I almost broke into a run and jumped around the corner. That's so cute, he's so excited. As soon as I did that, I rammed into somebody inside Dark Nook. Ha, Polina! Ow! <laughs> like a magic bird, a green notebook glided to my feet. L-O-K? What is that? Sorry, I was in a rush. Were you waiting for me? Did something happen? Polina studied me with her eyes and clicked her tongue. Do you know what you look like, Antosha? Like Blue's improv. I blinked in bewilderment. What do you mean? I always associate people I know with something. I do that too, but why music? It can't be anything other than music. 
Some people are like guitar solos, some are like drums. People like uh, Lilia Pavlovna are war machines. Fair enough. <laughs> and you're so thoughtful, so mysterious, sometimes even a bit sad. You're definitely blues. You're definitely depressed. <laughs> and what about the improv part? It's where the listener has no idea where the melody will go, or tempo it will adopt. Of course, some of the things Polina said went completely over my head. But I couldn't stop looking at her smile, light like the breeze in May, and her eyes, deep and blue. I wish I had ears like yours. And I'd love to have your eyes! I tensed up, worried that she was making fun of me, but Polina shook her head. No, no, I'm serious. You have the eyes of an artist. You're so good at picturing things. I can't do that. Ooh. Katya walked past with her trademark frosty glare. Were you the one waiting for me? Which one of you were waiting for me? This is very confusing. You understand why we're hiding here, right? Because of people like her. What kind of melody is Katya? <laughs> Polina flashed me a sly smile. Squeaking sound of unoiled door hinges. Ooh! Burn! Savage! <laughs> I giggled, covering my mouth. Shut up, Anton! You're gonna get yourself caught! Uh-oh. Katya didn't hear our whispers, but she suddenly glanced over her shoulder, clearly annoyed. A moment later, she sighed and went on her way. Oh wow, I'm actually surprised you didn't get caught. I remembered about the notebook that was still clutched in my hand. I turned it in my hands. Why does it say L-O-K -okay on it? Curiosity killed the cat, you know. I'm sorry. Is this a questionnaire? Have you ever filled one? I lied that I had. In reality, girl classmates from my previous school had never asked me to fill their questionnaires. It was quite upsetting. What question is? What do you mean? You can fill in mine if you want. My heartbeat quickened. I do. Thank you. <laughs> Polina giggled. Actually, there are so many secrets in there. You'd be better off not knowing what we girls think. She reached for the notebook, playing with me. I tossed my finding into my free hand. Polina tried to intercept my move. She's so fucking pretty! <laughs> Her hair briefly touched my face, tickling my nose with its silky locks. I sensed an aroma that immediately filled the whole world. Fragrant, alluring, lively. If only I could picture it, steal it for myself. I felt dizzy, but I gathered myself and spoke in a voice reminiscent of Lieutenant Tikhanov. Your questionnaire is an important piece of evidence, so I'm afraid I have to confiscate it for further examination. And what are the implications of concealing evidence? We'll decide that in the course of our investigation. I surrender, Mr. Policeman. Just promise you won't read anything. She's very trusting. If this is like her journal and stuff, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't trust anyone with that. <laughs> I took out the notebook during class, with that most care as if it was some sort of fragile treasure. Skimmed through it, reading into other people's preferences. I was quite surprised to discover Roma's jerky handwriting inside. Roma, 6B, Shafutinsky, February, uh, hanging out, buying a PMW, not Stallone, Schwarzenegger. Don't trust, don't fret, don't ask. <laughs> DuckTales, Biasha. Oh, that's the last question, like, who's your best friend? That's cute. Fias and Romka found time for something so silly? Ah, uh, that's because I think he has a crush on Polina as well. <laughs> Polina's page was decorated with flower drawings and clippings from the Cool Girl magazine. Oh, her best friend is her grandpa. Her favorite musician is Schubert. Her best friend is her grandpa. Her hobby is not violin, like I expected, but a much more mysterious listening. Hmm. Can such a mundane process be someone's hobby? I looked over at Paulina over the heads of the other students. 
She was focused on taking notes. I flipped the page until I found a blank one, and armed myself with a pen. Anton Petrov, Class 6B. Mm -hmm. I took a long time to decide my favorite musician, until a trendy pop band, Carman, came to mind with the cool dances in their music videos. Favorite holiday? This one's easy. New Year's. That's very specific! <laughs> oh yeah, Happy New Year everyone, if you made it this far into the video. So, Happy New Year's! I hope you had a wonderful 2021. If not, then hopefully 2022 will be better. My hobby is drawing. My dream? Going to Disneyland, I guess. My hero? My hand moved on its own, writing, da. <laughs> I stopped on those two letters. What if those who read this after me will find my answer laughable and stupid? It's- no, if it's your dad, it's your dad, just don't worry about it. After thinking for a bit, I decided that not everything should be disclosed on paper. That's how I turned spy- <laughs> And that's how I turned da into Spider-Man. The spelling was wrong, but who cares. Spider-Man. <laughs> your biggest fear, huh? I immediately wrote, losing a person who's dear to me. Your phone number? No secret here. 30395. Uh, your favorite cartoon? Transformers. Your best friend? I hesitated, gnawing on the pen cap. All yeah? I remembered Alyssa gliding between the trees, laughing enthusiastically from the shadows. I hadn't seen her in a week, and it even made me worried. After all, she was the one who stopped the colossus of a monster that wandered the forest in the night from tearing me to bits. I mentioned a masked girl to Romka and Biasha before, but they just gave me weird looks. I wonder what she's up to now. Your best friend. I read the question out loud. It was easy, but at the same time, very important. My answer consisted of three letters, and I filled them in the cells with K. You. Oh, that's kind of cute. She doesn't feel the same, though. You lose into her grandpa. <laughs> Refreshing frosty air made my cheeks turn beet red. It was bright outside, and the sun looked like a whole egg yolk. The road looked as if it was silvered. The snow sparkled under the sunlight. I smiled, squinting from the blinding whiteness. There was also something magical in my chest that beckoned me. Because friendship can grow into something bigger. What's with the happy face, Tosha? I swallowed my smile and turned red. I just remembered a joke. Nothing's here. You wouldn't get it. You had to be there, Biasha. Share it with me, huh? I rummaged through my memory and blurted out a random joke I'd heard today in the cafeteria. Why did the chewing gum cross the road? It was stuck to the chicken's foot. You'll need to help us out with some small business. Are you bullying people again? I felt chills run all over my body. I didn't like the sound of that. Small business. Strangers that used to call our old apartment used to say, Get your old man. We have small business to discuss. My knees started shaking as soon as I thought I was about to be dragged into something shady. Oh, God. Uh... Ooh, that was spooky, okay. Images flash before my eyes. Tikhanov's strict gaze as he shuts the prison cell door on me. My father hitting the bars in anger. Mom and Olya crying nearby. To my demise, there was nobody at the backyard. Apart from the grim-faced Rompka. He stood there, his feet wide apart, with his right hand hidden behind his back. He must be holding a knife. The steel butterfly of death that flies towards a person's heartbeat. Rompka's dry lips were tightly pursed. He kept shooting glances at me as he looked around. What's going on? Uh oh, I don't like this. It was as if Rompka read and announced my thoughts. What's going on? Nothing much. We're out for a walk. Yasha's voice sounded nasty. Snarky. Walk some other way. What's happening? Why are they angry at each other? We like it here, right, baby? What? I was so bewildered I wasn't able to squeeze a single sound out in reply. 
I just watched the bizarre scene play out in front of me with my new problematic friends. Look, you scared her. What do you care, shithead? Fuck off while you still can. What's happening? <laughs> Guys? Biasha ignored my weak protest and stepped towards Roma, swung at him in a weird comical manner. Romka blocked the punch with his free hand, keeping his right hand behind his back. Biasha started weeping even though I hadn't seen Romka hit him. Ow, 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 it hurts. I have a concussion now. What's happening? I'm so overwhelmed and confused. What's going on? Romka kicked him in the knee and Biasha fell to the ground, sighing and moaning. And I stared at the appro approaching Romka without blinking. His elbow was twitching and his hand crawled from behind his back. I grew roots into the asphalt. A blade will shine in front of me. Here it comes. Romka yanked his hand from behind his back and my teeth chattered from fear. A bouquet of snowdrops that appeared out of nowhere in this freezing weather swayed in front of my face. Anton's got so many suitors, it's great. Good for him. Let me escort you. You know, there are all sorts of creeps snooping around here. What's wrong with the innocent creeps doing a bit of snooping about, eh? You make for a shitty creep, Biasha. Even Toha here was not phased. She'll definitely see through our act. Words finally returned to me. She? Who's she? What's going on here? A small rehearsal, bro. We wanted to see a reaction. Biasha stood up and brushed himself off. Romka here is head over heels for a chick. Ooh, who? I want to know who. I want the deets. Give me the deets. Give me the goths. What is it? How about you become the creep? Me? A creep? How dare you? I'll have you know I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, Toha. I felt relieved. Nothing criminal. Just a scene for a girl. Wow. What What would I need to do? You saw Biasha's antics, no? You come at me all brave. You can even punch me in the stomach. Oh, thank you so much for the permission. <laughs> well, uh, let's give it a try then, I guess. Roma livened up. Nice. 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 Biasha, change of plans. You're a little girly now. <laughs> wow! Did he grow eyelashes? <laughs> Biasha started dragging his feet along the schoolyard, grimacing. That is exactly what a woman is. And how we walk, walk and talk. Your move, Toha. I went towards Romka fighting an urge to smile. He hit his hand again and put on a stern expression. Five-star actor. She's mine. Let me see you try. Oh shit. And I tried. Threw a punch in the direction of my friend. My knuckles barely grazed his leather coat and Romka suddenly fell. Is he acting? What is happening in this scene? I'm so confused. Not from my laughable poke, of course, but because he slipped on the ice. Oh. <laughs> Oops. He plopped on his back with his full weight without a chance to get his hand out of the way. Oh no, he crushed the flowers. Oh no! Petals from the squash flowers were left on the snow. Shit. I rushed to help. Oh no. But wait, don't pull. Did you break anything? Roma was carefully working his wrist. Nah, probably just a bruise. You should put some mice against it. Romka was already laughing as he got up and gathered the flowers. Well, if I go flying in front of that chick, I might as well forget about her. Let's give it another go. Romka shook his head. In the evening, when my hand gets better. I don't want to fuck up in front of the school's first violin. Ooh, he likes Polina. E. All right. I stumbled mid-word. Switch flipped in my head. It all made sense now. 
I remembered Romka constantly sneaking glances at Polina. I remembered his scrawly handwriting in the questionnaire. Why didn't I study it more in depth? It felt like somebody hit me over the head with a giant hammer, making me sink into the ground. Polina. She was the main character of this play directed by Romka. And I landed the role of the third wheel. I mumbled hesitantly. Alright. Now that's what I'm talking about. Just like Voltron's team. One for all. And all on one. All on one. <laughs> Shut it. If you ever need help, Antoha, you can count on me. Ah, oh, I feel so conflicted. I hope I don't have to pick between them, because honestly, I don't know who I would choose. We'll visit you in the evening. Bye, guys. See ya, I guess. Oh, poor Anton. The aftertaste of horrible water I drank down my meds with lingered in my mouth. What? <laughs> uh, it's missing a the. The aftertaste of the horrible water I drank down with my meds lingered in my mouth. I see. My thoughts were focused on Paulina. But the play where I was assigned the role of the villain was also on my mind. I wandered around the house, feeling intoxicated, and nodded to everything my sister said without trying to discern her words. Olia was talking non-stop, at times, lifting up her arms and laughing, only to then suddenly go quiet and give my mom's signature gnarly look. Oh god. I was yanked out of the prison of my own mind, where seething thoughts picked at my brain like harpies, stopping me from coming back to reality. I stared back. Olia looked like a mini version of our mom right now. Well, to be precise, she looked like the person mom turned into when we moved here, with her intimidating posture and her eyebrows directed towards the ceiling. You weren't listening to me, were you? She tried spitting those words at me, copying facial expressions of the person she spent almost all of her free time with. For a moment, I felt like the light Olya exuded all these years waned and wavered in the wind of prolonged changes. Very soon, my beautiful princess will turn into the dragon that was once guarding her prison tower. That thought was much scarier to me than any of the horrors sneaking up to me from the future. Olya, I'm sorry, Olya. I didn't want to make you mad, but I just got lost in thought. I looked around the room my gaze jumping from one object to another like a hungry beast, trying to find anything that could distract Olya. Let's play the console! Olya pouted, but there was a spark of interest in her small emerald eyes. Small? You call them those small? They're like half her head! <laughs> the Snow Queen's ice shards inside them started thawing. And what about the second controller? It's not working! And Dad has no time to fix it. Mm. We can play with the light gun. You must have been practicing the whole time I was away from home. <laughs> Olya burst out laughing. Her heart was warm once again. But I'm a good shooter now. You've already lost. Mm, them's a fighting words. You've picked the wrong fight here. Come on, turn it on. Cute. Little Olya jumped towards the TV set. After flicking the power switch, she started blindly feeling around the back of the photon, trying to plug the console's cable into the antenna input. Bits of TV shows started flashing on the CRT screen, when I armed myself with a remote to look for the channel with the sought-after Dendi signal. Did anything interesting happen at home? It was a mundane question for me, but I didn't put any actual meaning behind it. But Olya's expression suddenly started to change. She lost all of her childish nonchalantness that she'd worked so hard to acquire before. What happened, Olya? My sister managed to put the cable in its place and started brushing off her dust-covered hand. She was clearly looking for the courage to continue the conversation. Mom, she... What the fuck is happening? Olya went silent, and for a moment I thought I saw tears welling in her eyes. She had this scary thing happen to her again. My sister looked at me with wet eyes. 
What is this music? She had a fit, huh? Oh god. This had happened before, but it was a rare occasion. Now that we'd moved to this godforsaken place, Mom's fits rose in frequency. What is that? Ew! God! Dad brought home a big fish. I see that. It was wrapped in a newspaper and had a foul smell. Mom got angry again. And then she took a knife. Olya squirmed, looking fearfully out the window. They started screaming at each other. I froze, imagining my little sister, so small and unnoticeable, standing in the kitchen doorway. She wasn't even trying to hide. Our parents just paid her no mind at all. God, that's so sad! And then mom struck with her fist. Like this. Olya slightly moved her fist downward, imitating a strike. She hit the fish. It was still alive, Tosha. It must have been in pain. And mom. Mom. It was so easy to imagine what happened next. The writhing fish with a blade between its fins squirted some foul-smelling musk into mom's face. Whenever death got this close to my mom, be it when a person was hit by a bus in front of us and their blood was smeared all over the windshield, what the fuck? Or when grandpa chopped off a chicken's head. Mom would always get into a weird, dreadful fit. Oh god! Her eyes would roll over, and then she would fall on her face like a freshly cut tree. It started writhing, just like the agonizing fish, turning over chairs and blurting out bits of scary sentences. Like, I can't imagine how terrifying it would be to experience a fit. But yeah, of course it would be scary to watch one, but to experience one? Jesus Christ. And what about Dad? Did he help her? Olya shuddered, as if remembering it pained her. Yes, but at first... He started laughing. What the fuck? That's fucked up! He let out an evil laugh when he saw that mom was in trouble. And then he cried. Olya's story made me raise an eyebrow. It seems like the forest's oozing madness had not only completely consumed our mom, but also inf infected our strong and courageous dad. I quickly stepped towards Olya and locked her in a tight embrace. She dug her face into my chest and I could feel my shirt becoming wet. Why are they bullying each other, Tosha? That's so sad! Are they crazy? I stuttered, unable to justify the actions of our parents. You shouldn't have to justify them. I had ran out of words, and all I could do was hug Olya even tighter. Okay! Olya screamed and hid behind me! What the fuck was that, game? Why? Turn it off, quick! No matter how many times she saw this intro, she would always react the same. Just like when she saw that owl. Oh yeah, it's terrifying. What is that? I mean, I also get goosebumps every time I saw that ghastly face. So I immediately complied with my sister's request. Uh, what is it? I'm sorry, I'm messing up my words. Vid, a TV company logo depicting a ceramic head of the Chinese philosopher Guo Xing. Please tell me if I pronounced that wrong. With a three-legged toad on top of his head, instilled horror in the whole generation of 90s kids in Russia. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's play a game. Everything will be fine. Don't do that again. Okay. Finally, the game selection screen showed up for the cartridge that was bundled into the console. 9,999 in one. Great. Too bad most of the names here were just different levels of the same game. I picked up the grey rectangular controller and started looking around for the pixel letters to find the familiar English word for duck. Hi. Background music from the menu soothed Olya's mind as she asked in a calm voice. How are things at school? I made a couple of friends, I guess. Wow. A whole two of them? That's lucky. 
<laughs> How come Olya isn't in school yet? She seems old enough. She seems like she's like six, seven, maybe even eight years old. How come she isn't in school? I plugged the light gun into the second controller port, listening to my sister's laughs. I'll go first. Get ready, player one. Wait, am I doing this? Wait. What? What's happening? Ah. I'm gonna let Olia win because I feel sorry for her after what she'd experienced today. This is very cool that they've added this feature. I'm gonna turn it off though because this recording is getting very long. <laughs> Okay, we're done playing. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Olya. Oh, yeah. oh no, 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 don't cry! I didn't mean to make her cry. Oops. Shit. My mom only managed to get through to me on her third attempt. Anton, there's a call here for you. It's a girl. I sobered up in an instant and rushed to the hallway. Watch your step. I grabbed the phone, pressed it to my chest, looking at my mom. She shrugged and went into the room, gathering the toys thrown around by Olya as she went. Hello? Your mom has such a nice young voice. <laughs> what does having a young voice mean? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, she is young. Are you busy right now? No, of course not. If only she knew how costly this conversation could be for me. What risks I took on just answering this call. They were a pen and paper and a shabby notepad lying on the nightstand. I picked them up and started moving the tip of the pen across the paper, producing chaotic doodles that always ended up turning into hearts. I've read your answers. Do you really like karma? I like Russian rock more, to be honest. But I was too embarrassed to put it there for some reason. And do you want me to be honest with you too, Natasha? Of course. My pen drew an outline of a girl's face. Her eyes, her long eyelashes. Polina spoke in a hushed voice, probably to keep her grandpa from hearing. I'm bored to death here. At home? In the village. There's nothing going on here. And if there is, it's always something nasty. And it's not even about the missing kids. There's almost no music here. Don't you have your cassettes? I'm not talking about audio records. I mean, this place is voice. It's not melodic at all. It's all rustling like a record player needle. It just squeaks and moans from time to time. It feels uncomfortable. Suffocating. I don't know how else to explain this. My pen's tip drafted a house, surrounded by tall trees. I think I know what you mean. My little sister says she feels like a prisoner here. Me too. But I love my grandpa, and I don't want to abandon him. Sometimes I just want to escape so badly, somewhere very far away. Into the forest, I thought half-heartedly, to run under the falling snowflakes that make your fur white and the branches that hide you from prying eyes. When I draw, I feel like I'm transported to another place. It's the same for me in violin. I ran up the bow straight to the sky. I realized I was drawing a butterfly knife and I crossed it over. <laughs> Think if a Romka ruined my mood. Fair enough. <laughs> that was getting very cute. Should I tell her? Should I warn her about his plans to seduce her? I could throw a wrench into those plans. But what about our Voltron team? They may not be my best friends, but we're still buddies. What would I become if I betrayed them? Ooh! I hate this! I was gonna say, if there was an option that said tell her or don't tell her, I would have picked don't tell her. Because 
<laughs> it would be a lot less uh, problematic for Anton if Polina is the one who turned Rompka down. Right? Ugh. Um, I'm gonna pick Rompka. Sorry. <laughs> if this is a bad decision, I'm sorry. I apologize. If, if Rompka confesses to Polina and then Polina turns him down because she likes Anton, then that's not Anton's fault, right? Who knows? We'll see if this was a stupid decision. You guys can all tell me if it was a dumb decision in the comments. That's fine. You can make fun of me if you want. That's all good. That's all gravy. That's golden. But right now I'm going to pick Rompka. Yes, Rompka did act horrible from time to time. He was unfair towards the others and manipulated the weak. But something told me that friendship wasn't just a word to him. Didn't I wish to make friends in this new place? Even though they were as monstrous as the ancient forest scenery out my window, I lifted my glasses and rubbed my eyes. I wish I could grow up faster. Do you think it'll make life easier? It doesn't. Let me tell you, it doesn't. Sorry to be pessimistic. <laughs> Probably not what you want to hear if you're a young person struggling somewhere right now, but you just get better at handling things. Honestly. The doorbell rang before I could reply. My wandering gaze stumbled upon the door. Romka and Biasha came to pick me up for the rehearsal, and I was supposed to help them lure away the girl I like. Polina, uh, wait a moment. I made a couple of steps and pressed myself into the door. Well, I guess we're looking! That's our only option. Okay. The light bulb hanging on the outside illuminated the porch, and I could discern two short silhouettes through the frozen peephole. Look what the cat dragged in! Hey, look what the cat dragged in! I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Please wait, I'll be out in a moment. I returned to the phone and picked up the handset. I need to run. Me too. Thanks for lending an ear. Then again, if Alyssa, uh, if Polina is Alyssa, she already knows where I'm gonna be and what I'm doing. She's around, she watches, right? I put on my shoes and hat without warning anyone. And slipped into the dark winter evening. I blinked, getting used to the twilight. The wind plucked at my cheeks. It carried the cold, resinous smell of coniferous trees from the forest. Freezing air crackled somewhere in the field. Two shadows loomed in front of the gate. I could only recognize them as my classmates because of their height. Are you sure it's them? <laughs> Wait, I walked towards the fence, listening to the howling wind and squeaking snow. Um, one of the figures moved and slowly glided towards the thicket like an ice skater. Wait, is this a bad thing? Where? Hmm. I slowed down and touched my glasses, trying in vain to adjust my vision to the surrounding darkness. Worry landed on my shoulders like a weightless snowflake. A snake woke up in my belly and started writhing. I felt nauseous. I thought about home, the flimsy fortress behind my back. Mom and Olya were sitting on the second floor of the warm house in front of the TV, watching the adventures of characters in Santa Barbara. I really didn't want to be part of Romka's plan. And what I wanted even less was going there, to the place where a double shadow was wavering in the wind. Why so slow, eh? We're freezing here! Biasha's voice was trembling and the restless Romka was letting out clouds of steam. He looked deep in thought, and in love. We're freezing to the bone. Move it! I'm going, I'm going. I heaved a deep sigh and walked forward, kicking snow piles. Biasha froze in place, facing the tiger. He was a hand's reach away, and I put my numb wrist on his shoulder for some reason. Probably to make sure it wasn't a dream. Oh god! Hi! Well, I thought Biasha was the sheep. Apparently not. He is the owl. Great. A pointy beak was directed at me, strewn with feathers that formed an owl face. Something wearing a bird mask was staring at me. Hoot hoot. To the bone. <laughs> Cute. Okay, so Biasha's the owl. Great. Why are you scaring my sister? Why are you scaring Olya? This isn't cool, Biasha. I'm pissed off. The voice sounded exactly like Biasha's, but there was somebody else hiding behind the feathers in the carton. I sprinted away as if someone whipped me. The masked creature only pretended to be Biasha. They wanted to lure me out. I was running like crazy, drowning in snow. The house in front of me was rapidly growing. 
The yellow light in its windows granted me hope. My mom and my sister are there. My salvation. I couldn't hear anything from behind me, as if nobody was chasing me. Maybe it's because owls can fly. I was already climbing the porch when I noticed another figure. Oh, oh shit. Hi! Hi, Romko! What's up, man? Good to see you. You look good. From the soot-black shadow of my house, a scruffy wolf cub crawled out and stood in my way. Its movements were jerky, chaotic, as if it was performing some terrifying dance. Or convulsing during a stroke. That's very specific. The boy in a wolf's costume rubbed its side against the porch post and fell to its knees. He bent his back so hard that I expected his spine to crack. But he didn't attack. Yet. He kept crawling around and running on all fours. I shifted my feet, my mouth agape, trying to keep him in my line of sight. Something was trickling from the slit in the mask. Viscous drops fell into the wooden planks. Saliva. Some unknown force pushed me in the back, whispering me to save myself. The fence was flashing by at the edge of my vision. Oh god, I was running, in another direction this time, towards the toothy edge of the forest that smelled of pine. My heartbeat measured time. My right leg got stuck in the snow-laden cavity. I yanked it out, cursing under my breath, and fell to the ground. Plastering snow prevented me from standing up, from propping myself against anything. But my unbound thirst for life helped me get out of the trap. Darkness was creeping closer, like the toxic fumes of burial pyres. I ran again, gasping for air that stung my throat. My hair swayed in the wind. I lost my hat when I fell down, and my ears were now hot from the freezing cold while most of my body was still sweaty. The field finally ended. After realizing that running into the forest wasn't the smartest decision I could make, I dove into the line of trees. I ran without stopping, my face covered with one of my palms. I didn't want to lose an eye to some random branch. Branches whipped my clothes, pricking my skin like butchers that were herding pigs into the grinder. A knot of roots sprouting from the ground grabbed at my foot. I rammed into the scratchy trunk, slid down to its base, and looked around in panic. <sighs> You're so fast! My first desire was to dash towards her and hug her. I resisted it and squeezed myself even tighter into the pine. You... What are you doing here? This and that. She was holding the hat I lost. Working part-time in Lost and Found. Put it on, or your ears will freeze and maybe fall off soon. She giggled. I squinted in suspicion and shifted my gaze back and forth between her and the hat. Scared that Alyssa might be holding a severed head or something even more sinister. But in the end, my hat turned out to be just my hat. There were some children in the yard. And? Did they bite you or something? No. Then why did you run away? The answer was obvious, but after rolling the thought on my tongue, I mumbled. I don't know. <sighs> Why did I promise to never call you a dunce again? Oh well. I keep my promises. Hi, hi. <laughs> she walked up to me and grabbed me by the elbow. I sensed the familiar aroma of mint, oranges, and burnt sparklers. How many times do I need to tell you? You're safe as long as you're with me. I'm your friend. And they are too. I quickly turned around towards the place the fox girl was pointing to. Kids in masks appeared at the clearing. At least they looked like kids since they were all pretty short. Oh fuck. Mm -mm. A wolf boy, an owl girl, and a bear boy. Oh, the owl is a girl. Ah. Didn't you say it sounded like Biasha though? I'm confused. Hi, guys. God, that bear is an issue. They all huffed and gasped for air, clearly tired from running around. I thought you fell through the snow. Started digging around, but I couldn't find you. 
And I didn't. Didn't care enough. <laughs> K mean, rude, wow. You're a rat. Degenerate. Cool. Huh? Ah. I stood there, stupefied, my mouth agape and my hands dangling helplessly. I had no idea how to react to the words of these late night guests, but I managed to squeeze out something resembling a smile. You just scared me, that's all. They started looking at each other, and somebody even snorted, as if I'd said something funny. Yeah, yeah. Ah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, the fox is right. The He's the one. <laughs> no, this is our... Have we finally found him? <laughs> our bunny. Yes, he looks the part. The wolf boy started wagging a part of its costume like it was his tail, in excitement. First. Of course you were first. Wolfie here was the first to sense the bunny in you. He told us about you. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and you've already met our Hootie before. She isn't that scary, is she? Well, I guess. And this smiling big guy is Teddy. Be mindful with him, or he'll chew off your head. He has a very upsetting set of teeth, actually. They're far too human for my liking. The next time we come, we'll ring bells for you. That way you'll be less scared of our visit. Do we even have any bells? I won't be ringing. <laughs> my paw hurts. Who hurt their hand? Who has hurt their hand? Why can't I put that together in my head right now? Someone... Did someone hurt their hand at some point? Romka hurt his hand. He was holding the flowers, and then he fell. But he, he hurt his right hand, right? His right hand was behind his back. Hmm. I didn't expect you to find us fun. I thought it was an emotion reserved strictly to Disneyland. How do you know that, <laughs> Polina? How do you know that? I read about it. Somewhere. Somewhere. You read about me? Aren't you funny? No, about Disneyland, darling. You can read human? Do you think I've been going to school every day for nothing? Boy! That's it? That's the song? <laughs> oh god. I let out a cautious laugh. Okay, they're all fine. Who is that? Someone is standing there. Someone is standing there in the, in the trees. Who is that and why? Don't like this. My new acquaintances didn't seem scary anymore. On the contrary, they looked friendly and welcoming. There was something about them that attracted me. Just like this clearing, this moon, and snowflakes that fell backwards. From the ground to the sky, as if someone were rewinding a tape. I've just noticed that. You are correct, they are going up. Very weird. There was no animalistic malice in their touch, only pure childish curiosity. For some reason, I thought to myself, I can trust them. Snowflakes just kept on floating upwards. Nobody will hurt you anymore. Friend. Yeah, if somebody even tries to. The fox gave me a slight tug and burst out laughing. Well then, Tosha, will you run away screaming or come with us? Where to? To the amusement park. What? Where are we going? At that moment, Tiger's deceptive silence was broken by the sound of a distant flute. If I had any doubts before, the flute song shattered the last of them. I started following my new friends before I could even make a decision. Something is in the trees, I swear to God. <laughs> and it moved. My legs carried me of their own will, and the tunnels made of pine stepped apart. Bushes bowed in, bowed, bowed in front of our possession. Oh God. 
There's a lot of reading in this game. There's a lot of reading. It's especially difficult when you're reading out loud, because I love to make mistakes. It's my favorite thing to do. Because even the clearing we ended up on, I only saw my dream. The flute soared up in the treetops like some fantastical bird. The snowflakes floated up in a spiral. The moon painted the tree branches with silver. Alyssa gasped in amazement. I was also in awe. I tilted my head backwards as far as I could. Whew, what a sight! <laughs> as much as I quite like the owl, I do have a significant problem with you scaring my sister, which we do need to discuss, and I'm surprised Anton hasn't brought it up yet. This is nothing. I can show you much more. If you want. I did want. I wanted to see what the fox girl saw with her eyes, hidden in the semi-dark of her cape. Now I didn't feel weird about these masked kids. I felt weird about being the only one without a mask. I felt like I was naked in the January winds. Why do you wear these masks? I was trembling, but I wasn't scared. My trembling wasn't caused by the cold. It originated from the peculiar anxiousness, the anticipation of something amazing. And why do you ask? I touched my cold cheek. I'm not wearing one. I've already told you. All the villagers wear masks. It's just you won't find anything human underneath them. Deep, I looked at the mask the fox was holding out to me. The bunny mask that looked like a silver ingot under the moonlight. I was curious to see the world through its slits. Ooh, spooky! So cool! Suddenly fighting its way through the flute's melody, a thought came to me. The glasses they found were in Samyon's possession. My new acquaintances must have known what happened to him. Or even worse. And where did Samyon disappear to? What happened to him? And the other children? The bear and the owl looked at each other. The wolf boy curled into a ball and the fox lowered the pointy nose of her mask. The one who was kept in a cage. The one who cuts into little pieces. The one who wears a skin face took them. If I knew how to cross myself, I'd do it. So you're saying it was a human? Were you even listening to us? How can you call someone like him human? There's just one word for him. An adult. It's so easy to get lost in the adult world. Killers, cruel animal trainers, and cold parents. Ah, if you don't want to get sad, better not think about them. I don't know about you, but I definitely don't want to be sad. Alyssa wanted to show me something. Let's start with the sweet stuff. The fox girl took out a handful of candy from her pocket and handed them to the kids. Covers shuffled and the smell of pineapple, cocoa and melon wafted through the air. Why? Oh god, ew. The last treat, a chocolate covered waffle candy, Alyssa put right into my mouth. And her whole hand, apparently. My tongue was engulfed by spiciness. <laughs> Why is it spicy? I felt like my body was covered in fur and small sparks were running along it. I chewed on the waffle and the chocolate, gulping them down, enjoying the vivid taste. Спасибо. Thanks. My gratitude was barely audible because my lips were already touching the inside of the mask. I didn't even notice how I put it against my face. The pipi mache was warm. The mask stuck to my skin, giving it a nice prickle. The kind when you dive into a hot bath after being outside in winter, when you lie there and purr from the soapy water. See? I told you! This is yours! Mine! What are you waiting for? The fun won't have itself. You're right. It's sort of just dawning to me that all of these animals are predators, and Anton is prey. The melody kept swirling in the field like a hurricane. I couldn't wait to release the energy, the heat that this enchanting music was filling me with. The owl jumped up and disappeared into the sky. 
I heard her laughter from somewhere above, and then she landed back, huffing and sighing. You can do it too! Give it a try! I followed suit. Wow! They're in color! Holy shit, that's so cool! My feet tore off from the ground, and I flew towards the stars like a rocket, and screamed from happiness after seeing my friends down below. The wind helped me fly. It felt like I was jumping on a huge trampoline. Whoa, that's so pretty. The stars looked like vivid sparkles that I could reach and lick up. And the moon also got closer. And then I plunged. I got scared that I'd break my legs for a moment, but my soles landed softly on the ground and I regained my balance. You're safe with us! And all your dreams will come true! I'm so happy that I finally found you! Bunny! In a fit of merry laughter, I realized the most important thing. These four are not a threat. My real enemies, and I felt that with every single hair on my mask, were those who knew nothing about magic. Humans from the village. Whoa! I also realized how alive my surrounding had become. I heard the dry grass under the snow moan. I saw faces of the trees and the stars. The trees were smirking, and the stars were grimacing in fear. Okay, hey! Um... That's right, be scared. I'll jump up to you and... I snapped my teeth and let out a jubilant laugh jumping along with the fox. So pretty. I love seeing them in color. Alyssa does have deep blue eyes though, like Paulina does. We flew higher than the tallest pines and stayed in the air. I swirled. Alyssa followed my rhythm. I knew that she was smiling, so I smiled too. And the flute just kept on playing, carrying us higher and higher. Hey! Got your head in the clouds again? Not with you around, I thought, trying to unglue my chin from the desk. Were you asleep in class? Was that all a dream? I'm so sad. <laughs> my muscles felt slightly sore, but that feeling was pleasant. My whole class was wandering around for some reason, whispering and passing notes to each other. Their faces looked like discolored masks to me, bleak and boring. I yawned. Remembering the time I was soaring high above the forest with Alyssa by my side, laughing and squeezing my hand. Perhaps, no. Probably. It was all just a dream. Because I didn't walk back from the forest. I just woke up in my bed, on a normal morning with tea and medicine. Still, I was hardly worried about trying to find a rational explanation for my night dance. That feeling of flight was so much more important. The knowledge of how it feels to be hanging in the air above the treetops of majestic pines and baring my teeth at the moon. What do you want? What do I want? While you were nodding off there, Katya went missing. Oh! My sleepiness was gone in an instant, and I frowned in suspicion. What do you mean? It can't be! Oof. That is my last scene during the day on January 12th in the schoolyard. Ugh. Flower-shaped brooch on her hat. Okay, we gotta look out for that. Thank you for completing episode 3! Ah! Boy! We are deeply grateful for everyone who's purchased the game in early access. All the profits will go towards the further development of the game. Cool! Holy shit! That was episode three of Tiny Bunny and I couldn't be happier. It was so good to play this game again and I really can't wait for the next episode. I know it's probably going to be a while, which is a really big shame, but it'll be worth it because this, this game is so good. So I really, really hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you think in the comments or any theories that you have. For now, I'm going to go and rest my voice because that was a lot of talking. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching once again. I really appreciate it. Hope you had a wonderful New Year's and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.